In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of what is known as the Asian disease problem. And in this problem, people might be told that there is a fatal disease in a village of 600 people. And you have the choice of using one of two vaccines. Now you have to use one of the two, you can't use both. So vaccine A has a 100% chance of saving 200 people. Vaccine B has a one third chance of saving all 600 people, but it also has a two thirds chance of saving nobody. So before we go on, just have a quick think about which of these two vaccines you would prefer, vaccine A or vaccine B. Now, in um, another kind of condition of the experiment, people might be um, given the following options. So the same um, disease is happening in a village of 600 people. And the idea that um, if you chose vaccine C, then 400 people will die. And if you chose vaccine D, you'd have one third chance of nobody dying and a two thirds chance of everybody dying. So before we move on, have a quick think about in this situation, would you prefer vaccine C or vaccine D? Now, the interesting thing about the Asian disease problem is it tells you very much about the, the framing of events. So what I've done here in this table is basically to just um, put in the information that we were given about vaccine A, B, C and D. So in the first example, when we were considering vaccine A and B, this was what's called the, the gain frame. So if we look at the wording here, vaccine A will save 200 people. But if we look in the loss frame, so that was the second example looking at vaccine C and D, vaccine C says that 400 people will die. So if we actually think in terms of expected, um, the expected number of lives saved, so vaccine A, the expected number of lives saved is 200 and with no uncertainty. Vaccine B is a risky choice, but when you work it out, the expected number of lives to be saved um, would be 200. Now, this is kind of interesting. So from the perspective of ex um, from the perspective of expected value theory, we would propose that people don't have um, a preference between these two things. Now, it could also be because of um, non-linear utility functions. It could be that some people would have a preference for uh, risky choices, so vaccine B or vaccine A. We're going to look at the results in a moment. Let's just finish our thinking in terms of our predictions. So vaccine C, again has um, the same expected number of lives saved of 200 and so does vaccine D. So this is um, quite a clever design here. All of these vaccines would save the same um, number of people on average. But what is changing clearly is um, either the level of risk or certainty of each option and also the framing. So one is, as you can see on the left, the, with the gain framing, we can see that we're talking about saving people. And on the right, in the loss frame, we're talking about um, how many people will die. So let's have a look at the proportion of people who chose each option. So it turns out that of um, in this experiment by um, Tversky and Kahneman, 72% of the participants chose vaccine A and only 28% of people chose vaccine B. And so this might be confusing from an expected value 
theory perspective because the number of lives saved is 200. Now, if we want to consider um, risk-seeking or risk-aversive behavior, what we can see is that most people went for vaccine A, which has no uncertainty, um, and fewer, a, a smaller proportion of people went for vaccine B. And so we can say that in this gain frame, people are exhibiting um, some slight risk aversion. They're going for the, the sure thing of saving 200 people. Now, if we look at the proportion of people who, who chose vaccine C and D, we see that this has um, reversed. So now we only have 22 people going for the, the sure thing, the sure vaccine of 400 people will die. And we have 78% of people who are going for uh, the risky thing. So what we can see is that this kind of preference for risk aversion in the gain domain has flipped in the loss domain. And so now people um, are actually preferring the risky choice. So this is a kind of a change of behavior. It's um, maybe not quite predicted by um, expected value theory. And it's also a bit strange in terms of um, the framing here. So this is um, one example of what you might call a framing effect. We saw that the only um, difference between the two examples were whether the um, whether the, the options were framed in the sense of saving people versus the number of people who would die. So this is problematic for various kind of simple theories because they propose that you would essentially base your decision just upon um, either the expected number of lives saved under expected value theory or um, the expected utility of saving um, things, saving people. But what you can see is that the way the wording, the way in which the choices are presented to you um, do make a difference, even though according to these theories, they should not make a difference. And so that is one of the kind of interesting aspects of framing effects.